five that I want to show you is this. You see, Moses, he did not show. Um, he, did, he was not negative in front of the people. He was so courageous in front of the people. But he came to the Lord. He said, Lord, how now? <laughs> That's what he said. You know, he said, Lord, how? Okay, I believe you might say that because in verse 15, the Lord answered him and said, why do you cry to me? God is asking Moses, Moses, why do you cry to me? Why? You don't have to cry to me. You know what God is showing to uh, uh, teaching Moses and telling Moses? Say, Moses, use your authority. Hallelujah. You know, brothers and sisters, you and me as a New Testament believer, washed away by the blood of Jesus, sanctified and purified by his blood, and made us righteous in God. Do you know that we have the authority in our life? But most of us, we do not know how to use our authority. Many times I have witnessed when people face problems, people do not know to command or do not know to declare or decree because they do not know their authority. But as a believer of God, we have such an authority because Jesus has given us that authority. And he is living in us. All authority has been given to the Lord Jesus. And the Lord Jesus is living in the inside of us through his Holy Spirit. And we have the authority already. But many of us do not know how to use our authority. Do you know that when you are sick, when you, when you got problems, you need to stand on that victory ground. And you need to talk to the problem and say, in Jesus' name, get out. In Jesus' name, move. And the Bible says, even the mountain, when you speak to the mountain, the mountain will be moved. But we are not speaking. We are not speaking the word of God with authority in our situation. We often, we agree to the situation. We give in to the situation. In other words, we become so comfortable with the situation. Until he turned to become a norm for us. Now everybody use the word. The new norm. The new norm. Okay? The new norm. Are you going to agree to this new norm? Or are you going to see God going to turn all these things around? You see, we can give in to all this until we become so different. Become so different. So there is, uh, we do not know how to use our authority. The authority has been given to you, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Learn to use your authority. Learn to speak to your problem and command your problem to be removed. You see, the Bible says here in uh, Matthew 28, verse 18 to 20, Jesus came up and spoke to them saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach them to observe all the command, all that I have commanded to you. And lo, see, and then he said, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. You see, all authority has been given to the Lord Jesus. The Lord Jesus has all, all authority. But today, the Lord Jesus is living in the inside of you. So that means what? The authority of Jesus is in you. It's already in the inside of you. But we do not know what is our authority as a believer. We do not know who we are in Christ. We walk in defeat. Just that we do not know our real identity. So brothers and sisters, you must come to a place to know your identity. You must come to your place to know who you are in Christ and who Christ is in you if you know who you are and you belong to who the way you face your problem the way you face your issue will be different hallelujah you see brothers and sisters sometimes when I have some uh, uh, some issues in my body or you know some issues that I face or what I command I take authority I command in Jesus' name, every sickness, get out from me in Jesus' name. I use the authority. Are you using your authority? 
that has been given to you. Amen. And then also in uh, uh, before this, that I want to share with you that the Bible says, if you have, you know, the little faith as big as mustard seed and you speak to the mountain, you remove and the mountain will be moved. Amen. It will be moved. You know, one of my pastor friends loved to use this scripture. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So brothers and sisters, learn to speak the word of God in your situation with authority. That's why God said, hey, use your authority, Moses. Why are you crying to me? Hallelujah. Amen. Then here in verse 15 also, after God said to Moses, Moses, don't cry to me. Tell the children of Israel to go forward. You know what does that mean? He said, go forward. There is no road for them to go forward. That time, the Red Sea was not departed. At the, at the front of them, you know, in front of them, there is a Red Sea. At the back, Pharaoh and the army is coming after them. The children of Israel, they have no way out. But God spoke to them. God said, hey, tell the people, tell my people to go forward. That means what? Move by faith. Move by faith. You see, brothers and sisters, when we face issue, we are quickly to forget about who God is and what God is able to do. And our, we totally forget that we are the people of faith. You know, brothers and sisters, in your born again spirit, you already have faith in the inside of you. Faith is not an issue in you. Do you know that? In your born again spirit, you already have faith because faith is one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit and it's in us. But what is happening to us is not a faith problem, but it is unbelief. We have unbelief issue. Amen? You may think that, Pastor, isn't it uh, faith, no faith and unbelief is the same thing? No, it's not the same thing. Next time I explain to you. Amen? All right, we have unbelief. So God is saying to the children of Israel, move forward. Step out by faith. Move by faith. Maybe some of you who are sitting here or listening to this message, you need to do something by faith. Amen? Step out by faith. Move by faith. That's what God is. God is waiting for you. God has been speaking to you. Maybe you are ignoring. Maybe you are so afraid to do that. Hallelujah. Amen, brothers and sisters. God is awesome, isn't it? In Mark chapter 11, verse 22, it says, this is what I said to you just now. I tell you the truth. If anyone say to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in his heart. This is what I say. Doubt in his heart and believe that what they say will happen and it will be done for them. Amen. The problem is whether... You have unbelief or you can overcome your unbelief. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, learn to speak the word of God with the authority the Lord Jesus already given to you. Amen. Hallelujah. So brothers and sisters, I'm coming to my last point tonight. This is where I want to share a beautiful revelation with you. Okay. My last point tonight that I want to share with you is God make a way where there seems to be no way. In Exodus chapter 14, verse 16, God told Moses, uh, Moses, this is what Moses did. But lift up your rod. This is what God said to Moses. Lift up your rod and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it. You see, God said, divide it. God said, Moses, I want you to go and stand there. Lift up your rod and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it. Moses must be thinking, God, are you sure my hand can do this? He said, all that God wants Moses to do is the act of faith. To act on God's word. To act on, uh, act by faith. That's what God wants to see. One step of faith will follow by many steps of the Lord in your life. So time God wait for us to take the first step because God wants to help us. God wants to teach us to trust in Him and to follow Him and to walk with Him. Hallelujah. 
Amen, brothers and sisters. So here Moses, God said to Moses, lift up your rod and stretch your hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. What God is saying to Moses, Moses, act in your faith, respond to my word, do what I say, and I will make sure the children of Israel will walk on the dry ground. What God is saying is, I make sure that there will be a way for the children of Israel where there seems to be no way. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, maybe your situation tonight is very hopeless. Maybe your situation looks like very, uh, you know, uh, a very trying situation. But let this sink in your spirit, in your heart, deep down in your heart, that God is able to make a way where there seems to be no way. Trust God that God is able to make a way in your situation. God is able to open a new door of job for you. God is able to open a new opportunity for you. God is able to open that door that you have been waiting for so long. He is able. Where seems to be no way, God is a way maker. Hallelujah. And let me share with you something else. I want to ask you this question. How the Red Sea was, div was divided? If you see in a, in a deeper way this scripture, I want to share two revelations on this. And I believe that it will bless you. Okay, number one, what happened here is Moses acted on God's word. Okay? He acted on God's word. When God told him, Moses, in verse uh, earlier than this, God said, Moses, lift up your hand. Lift up, stretch out your hand and divide the water. You know, Moses did exactly the same. In verse 16, God commanded him. And verse 21, Moses did exactly what the Lord said to him. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night and make the dry into dry land and the water were divided all that god was waiting is to moses to act by faith and for moses to act on god's word amen when moses do that it shows that moses have faith in god and god and moses trusted god and moses just followed god's instruction you see, brothers and sisters, sometimes what God asks us to do may not make sense to you. You see, if you are in Moses' place, standing at there in front of the Red Sea that was so deep, that was so huge, and you are crying out to God, and God is telling you, just stretch your hand, Moses, stretch your hand, and uh, just over the sea, and divide it. You know, if you are in that place, what you... You will be thinking, you will be thinking, I'm asking God to rescue me, but why God ask me to do something that doesn't make sense to me? You know why? God's ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are greater than our thoughts. His plans are much bigger than your plans, brothers and sisters. Even though at times God's uh, way of doing, you cannot understand, or at times God will ask you to do something that doesn't make sense to you. But all that you need to do is trust and obey. That's what you need to do. Just trust and obey. And Moses did exactly the same. And he said, God, even though it doesn't make sense to you, I thought you will send an angel. Probably Moses, Aaron, and the people of God there, they might be thinking, God will send an angel and God will, you know, protect them with the angel. God will send the angel, will fight for them and all. They have no idea that God going to divide the Red Sea until God spoke to Moses. Amen. You see, brothers and sisters, maybe in your situation, you might be thinking the solution can be this. The solution can be like this. Or maybe this is the solution. Maybe this is the way out. But don't be surprised if God have other ways to do. Don't be surprised God will choose some other things. Someone else to help you. 
Because his ways are higher than your ways. His plans are greater than your plans. He is omnipotent, all-powerful God, and he can do anything. So Moses acted on God's word, and he acted on faith. He put God's word into action, and he became the doer of God's word. You see, exactly what you see here, Moses turned to become the doer of God's word. God says, stretch your rod, and lift your rods, and stretch your hand. And Moses did exactly the same. And he followed exactly what God said. See, brothers and sisters, is there anything that God is asking you to do that you are still contemplating, that you are still procrastinating, that you are still holding back because of fear, you know, because of you do not know whether that's from God or not, you've got so much doubt in you. Are you still holding back anything that God is asking you to do? See, brothers and sisters, when you act on the command of God and if anything that God asks you to do, in all ways, you will end up in the place of great blessing. And that's what happened to Moses and the children of Israel. Okay? Moses acted on God's word. He obeyed, he trusted and obeyed, and he became the doer of God's word. You know what happened? There's a great miracle that took place in front of Moses. You know, brothers and sisters, you take a water in a tub, you try to divide and see, can you divide? Okay, one side is a pillar of uh, water, this side is another pillar of huge water, and there's a dry ground. Do you think it's possible for any man to do that? Moses must be trembling standing there. The people of God must be trembling standing there to look at the great miracle God is doing. How awesome is that? Moses' obedience, Moses' uh, respond to God's word end up in a great blessing. So brothers and sisters, even if God asks you to do something that does not make sense to you, something that is you know, out of box, just Trust and obey and do it, you will end up in the place of blessing. Amen? So my next one that I want to show you is this. The Holy Spirit responded to God's word and divided the Red Sea. You must be thinking, Pastor, why suddenly the Holy Spirit come into the picture? And let me show you this revelation. Okay? When Moses acted on God's word, that means he responded uh, to God's word. God's word being applied there. You know what happened? The Holy Spirit acted. Here in verse 21, the Bible says, Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind at night and made the sea into dry land. And there the water were divided. The word wind here, the word wind I have placed here, this wind translated in Hebrew, this word has been translated as ruach, and in Greek, translated as puma. Both translation gives an interpretation, one interpretation, which is the breath of the Spirit. I mean, sure, the breath of the Lord, or the Spirit of the Lord, or the breath of God, or the Spirit of God. And then it speaks about the person of the Holy Spirit, you see, when the Lord said he caused, he, he caused the sea to go back by a strong wind. This wind is not an ordinary wind. This wind is a representative, speaks about the person of the Holy Spirit. And the third person in the Trinity, the third Godhead in the Trinity showed up in that place and it says he divided that Great sea. And do you know that? Amazing or not? Praise God. It was the Spirit of God. It was the Spirit of uh, uh, Spirit of the Lord that divided the Red Sea for the children of Israel. Hallelujah. You see, brothers and sisters, when we talk about the pillar of cloud in the daytime and the pillar of fire at night, it is also speaks of the Holy Spirit. I keep that for another sermon. That's a beautiful sermon there. It's the third person in the Trinity. Hallelujah. The clouds always speaks about 
the Holy Spirit. The fire always speaks about the Holy Spirit. That's why I always say to you, the Holy Spirit was not created in the New Testament when Jesus went back to be in the heaven and sent his spirit was not created at that moment but the holy spirit already existed from the beginning and i always mention to you the holy spirit will always respond and will always do according to god's word when the bible says this world was in darkness and in void nothing was in this world the spirit of the lord was hovering over the surface of the world until the spirit of god heard the voice of God when God said let there be light when God said let there be light the Holy Spirit acted and the Holy Spirit brought light into this world it was the Holy Spirit from the beginning the Spirit of God Ruach HaKodesh was there and the same Spirit of God the same breath of God divided the water the Red Sea for the children of Israel. How awesome is that? How wonderful is that? So brothers and sisters, the same Holy Spirit who divided the water, the Red Sea, is the same Holy Spirit that was, you know, working in and through our Lord Jesus Christ. The same Holy Spirit raised our Lord Jesus Christ from death on the third day. And the same Holy Spirit who came upon the disciples on that on that, uh, uh, on that day of Pentecost in that upper room, the same Holy Spirit who works in Peter and John everywhere they go, the same Holy Spirit is living in the inside of you and me, and the Holy Spirit will help us, and the Holy Spirit will make a way for you in every situation that you are facing right now, and the same Holy Spirit will make a way for you because He is the way maker. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is a way maker. So, brothers and sisters, continue to fellowship with the Lord. Continue to commune with Him. Continue to have the koinonia of the Holy Spirit. And let the Holy Spirit do the impossibilities in your life. Even your situation looks so hopeless. Even your there is no way out. There is no place for you to go further. But in that moment, in that place, the Holy Spirit is able to make a way for you. He is a way maker. Hallelujah. Amen, brothers and sisters. We serve a mighty God. So this is my last slide, brothers and sisters. So I just want to encourage you, no matter what you are facing, nothing is impossible for you. Just trust Him, just continue to walk with Him, and just let Him do what He wants to do in your life. So brothers and sisters, just be still. I know this is a very trying time for many people, but just be still. Even this, uh, this, uh, uh, the partial lockdown period, or whatever that we are facing, okay, nothing can hold us back. Because you are people of God, you have the mighty power of God, you have the authority of God in you, you have the Spirit of the Lord, the sweet Spirit of our Lord Jesus Christ is with you, He will never leave you, nor forsake you. Amen, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. So praise God. Let me just pray for you before we end the service. If you have any prayer requests, uh, I don't know, tonight there any prayer requests? I think they wouldn't have. So with that, let me just pray a prayer, a blessing for you. Then after that, uh, we can close the service tonight. Hallelujah. Praise God. What a mighty God that we serve. We serve an awesome, awesome, awesome God. Awesome God who is able to divide the Red Sea. The same God is working in your life and in my life. You see, brothers and sisters, isn't it amazing the God who, who divided the Red Sea who make a way for the children of Israel. The same God is working in your life and in my life. See, that one word alone, I can meditate for days. Just to think, I become so amazed. I totally amazed and become so humbled by this, by our amazing God, how loving He is. See, He is a powerful God. He can divide 
the deep red sea. And the same God is living in the inside of us. And the same God is working in our life. How humbling is that to know? How awesome is that? See, brothers and sisters, you and I have no reason to be afraid. Do you know that? We have no reason to be fearful. No reason to be anxious. You only know who you are in God. And if you know who is God in your life, you will walk differently, brothers and sisters. Oh, I pray the Holy Spirit will give you a tremendous understanding about the things of God in your life, about who you are and who God is in your life. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will bring you deeper to see a huge revelation that you don't have to be afraid. You know, even in the drought season, now the entire world is going through drought. drought. Like the children of Israel, they, was, they were in the wilderness. It's a drought. But in that drought, God provided for them. In the dark, God protected them. In that drought, God made a way for them. Make a way for them. And God will do it. He is the same God. You see, God is the same. He is the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. And He will continue to work in your life. Hallelujah. I think I'm starting another sermon already here. <laughs> right. Come, let us pray. I just want to pray a prayer of blessing in your, you know, for your home, for your life. And I just pray that after you hear this message, every fear, every you know, anxious feeling will just melt away.